Native Americans. Do you know who the first people to live in America were? People think it was Christopher Columbus and his crew. Others think it was European settlers or people that came to live here from Europe. But it was actually the Native Americans. Native means they were born in America, though it wasn't called America at the time. This was long before it became the United States. They were here much earlier than Columbus. When Columbus discovered America and its people, he named the people Indians because he thought he was in India. You may have heard other people call them Indians too. The correct term for how we refer to them is Native Americans. The Native Americans lived in both North and South America, including Alaska and Hawaii. There were different tribes and cultures who lived in different parts of the country. A tribe usually consisted of families or communities that spoke the same language and had common beliefs. They also shared the same customs or traditions. Some well-known tribes include the Cherokee, Apache, Cheyenne, Iroquois, the Ute Nation, and Navajo Nation. There were many other tribes as well. Each tribe has its own type of home, foods they ate, tools, clothing, and more. The tribes are no different than people across the world today who have their own cultures and customs. Most historians believe the tribes were quite peaceful before the arrival of Columbus and other Europeans. Native Americans designed their homes according to the weather and area where they lived. A teepee was built using long poles for the frame or structure. The poles were tied together in a bundle at the top. Each of the legs or poles was then spread out, creating a large circle at the bottom. The poles were then wrapped with buffalo hide to protect the people from the weather and to keep them warm. The teepees could easily be taken down and put back up again, making it the perfect house for people who moved a lot. A wigwam was about 8 to 10 feet tall. Like the teepee, it was also made from wooden frames. These frames were covered with sheets of bark from a birch tree. Native Americans also used birch bark to cover canoes because it was waterproof and strong. It was also used for other things like baskets. A wigwam was more rounded than a teepee. Some wigwams were covered with grass. Those were called grass houses. Grass houses were much larger than a wigwam. A longhouse was a permanent home. Unlike the teepee, it was not moved from place to place. It was built from wood and bark in the shape of a rectangle. Holes were created in the roof to allow air to escape. There were doors on both ends of the house, similar to many houses today. Tall poles from trees were curved and then used to create the roof. These houses were also covered with bark. Long houses were about 80 feet long and 18 feet wide and could hold about 20 people. A pueblo was a home built right into the side of a cliff, which is why it was also called a cliff dwelling. These homes were built of bricks made from clay. They sometimes were built inside of caves. Some pueblos were four or five stories high. Ladders were used to go from floor to floor. These houses could hold many people. Some other types of Native American homes were wattle and daub, plank house, igloo, and chicky. The materials used to build homes depend on where the tribes lived and what was available to use. The clothing that the Native Americans wore were also different from tribe to tribe. If an area where Native Americans lived was warm like Arizona, then less clothing was worn because of the heat. In contrast, if it was a cold area like Alaska, clothing was layered for warmth. A common material for clothing was animal skins. The soft leather of the animal hides was used for shoes as well as covering for some of their homes. Plants and cotton were also used for clothing. Native Americans used the resources around them like plants, bark, and roots to create dye. They used the dyes to color their clothing, baskets, mats, and other items. Many tribes hunted buffalo or caribou for food. 
as well as deer and rabbits. Fishing was widely used to provide food for villages that were close to rivers or streams. Spears, nets, and fish traps were made to catch the fish. In cold regions like Alaska, ice fishing was common. A small hole was cut into the ice and long spears were used to catch the fish. Farming was important to many of the tribes, especially in warmer climates. Main crops included corn, beans, and squash. Native Americans created many beautiful works of art. Pottery is the process of using clay to create handmade pieces. These works of art were not only beautiful, but very useful. Pottery was used to store grain and other foods. It was also used to collect water. Colorful baskets, blankets, and carvings such as totem poles or sculptures carved into large tree trunks were created. Some tribes like the Navajo and Pueblo were famous for sand paintings. Native Americans also had traditions which included religious and other ceremonies. Stories, music, dancing, games and sports were enjoyed. Like every people and culture in the world, the Native Americans lived, worked, and played based on their beliefs and customs. Native Americans still live throughout the United States today. According to the 2010 census, 5.2 million people in the United States identified as American Indian or Alaskan Native, either alone or in combination with one or more other races. Out of this total, 2.9 million people identified as American Indian and Alaskan Native alone. The remainder 2.3 million reported being American Indian and Alaskan Native in combination with one or more other races. There are more than 566 federally recognized sovereign American Indian or Alaska Native tribes, of which 229 are Alaska Natives who are divided into three groups, the Indians, the Aleuts, and the Eskimos. In addition, there are over 200 non-federally recognized tribes, each with its unique customs and beliefs. Some Alaska Natives do not mind being called Eskimos or Indians. However, some do not like to be called Native Americans or Eskimos and prefer Alaska Native, Alaska Indian, or Inuit. The amount of Indian blood necessary to be considered a tribal member or American Indian varies with each tribe. The Indian Health Service, or the IHS, was designed to fulfill the U.S. government's role in providing health care to American Indians and Alaska Natives. However, inadequate funding has left those who depend on the IHS with only limited health care. Overall, American Indians or Alaskan Natives are extremely diverse groups of people. Some are very traditional, some are highly acculturated, and some selectively combine tradition with European American culture. Many share similar but not exact traditions, beliefs, and values. American Indians or Alaskan Natives are a particularly vulnerable population in terms of assessing health care. High poverty rates, individual high-risk health behaviors, social factors, low educational levels, and chronic conditions make it particularly important for assessing and receiving ongoing supportive and preventive care. One-third of American Indians or Alaskan Natives are in families with incomes below the federal poverty line. One in five adults has not graduated from high school. Almost half of uninsured adults do not have a usual source of care, making it difficult to receive preventive services and timely care for acute health problems. Communications of American Indians or Alaska Natives are collective cultures and avoid conflict and confrontations. Each tribe has its own language, but some languages are similar to each other. Younger people speak English. Some older people may know only the traditional tribal language or perhaps Spanish in the southwestern part of the United States. Use professional interpreters whenever possible. Confidentiality is taken seriously. Provide interpreters unknown to the patient or family. Greet everyone in the room and establish relationships. 
Depending on the situation, punctuality may not be valued. Lateness is not meant as disrespect but is the result of a different sense of time. Maintaining continued eye contact with someone during a conversation is considered disrespectful and do not maintain direct and sustained eye contact during an assessment. Greet American Indians or Alaskan Natives with a light handshake, not a firm, pumping handshake. A nod of the head may denote I hear you, not necessarily agreement with what has been said. And also, most appreciate a space greater than 2 feet during a conversation, especially with strangers, and for some, maybe up to 6 feet. Also, learn to take cues from the individual. And lastly, American Indians also utilize Plains Indian Sign Language, a learning method that is different from conventional method now being taught in universities and schools. It is fun to learn, it is interactive, and is based on direct communication with people. They would talk through language, but also use science because science was the way to communicate with each other. Family Roles of American Indians The extended family is the primary social unit in most American Indians or Alaskan Natives cultures. Most define family as a member made up of fictive and non-fictive kin, extended family, and tribal community. One is rarely alone or without family. Some tribes are patriarchal and patrilocal, a social system where a married couple lives with a husband's family. Others are matriarchal and matrilocal, a social system where a married couple lives with a wife's family. Given the individuality in any family system, determine the family spokesperson ahead of time before a decision has to be made. Traditionally, women are responsible for child rearing, domestic tasks, and the overall concerns of the family. In a more modernized version, women roles are more varied. The goal of family and parental support within the context of the family of origin is to foster interdependence. Family and parental support encompasses cultural and spiritual maintenance and satisfaction of physical and emotional needs. Lifelong interdependence among members is also fostered. In traditional families, children frequently attend adult events but they are expected to remain silent unless invited to speak. Child rearing is a family affair that includes aunts, uncles, and cousins. While the mother bears the primary child rearing responsibility in a traditional family, fathers and siblings are active participants. Rather than learning from direct verbal instructions, children are expected to learn through observations and from examples. And it is acceptable for children to be disciplined in public. Children demonstrate their skills and knowledge by what they can do rather than what they say. Alternative lifestyles are accepted readily in most tribes. Gay and lesbian lifestyles have long been accepted in many tribes, although there are individual variations. Also, older people are held in high respect and are a good source for family care. One major factor behind the high poverty rates and low wealth of American Indians is their low rate of employment. The Native American unemployment rate is considerably higher than the white race. Unfortunately, this is all too common in American Indian countries, and understandably so, considering the lack of jobs and access to other opportunities for economic independence. Another challenge for Native Americans are the needs for additional education to find jobs or training and development needed for work promotion. With the remote location of many reservation communities, transportation is also critical to finding work. A known contributing factor is the lack of access to capital or credit for on-reservation citizens. About a third of Native Americans say they have experienced discrimination in the workplace when seeking jobs or when getting promotions or earning equal pay. Slightly more said that they were on the receiving end of slurs or negative comments based on race. Laws and reforms have now been 
place to ensure work for American Indians, and several facilities are now providing training and education for employment. Biocultural Ecology General height for Native Americans are mostly under 6 feet tall. Anatomical features of Native Americans are having little to no body hair, brown skin, and epicanthal folds. Native Americans has the highest rate of many health conditions due to cultural influences in medicine. Native Americans are also known to have a high rate of obesity compared to other racial and ethnic groups. In Native Americans, the leading cause of death to these ethnic groups are cancer, chronic liver disease, unintentional injuries, diabetes, and heart problems. Tuberculosis is another problem that occurs within the Native Americans. High-risk behaviors. In Native Americans, more than one quarter of their population smoke for the sole purpose of ceremonial, religious, or medical purposes. Drinking problems are common amongst one out of five Native Americans due to historical trauma from the Europeans that colonized the country and this culture that the Europeans influenced the natives stayed till the present day. Nutrition The food available in Native American areas are diverse in resources, but most of their diets are high in fat and sugar. The availability of fresh fruits and vegetables are another problem for Native Americans due to seasonal weather changes. Some tribes practice avoiding types of food due to religious and cultural practices. For example, the Navajo isn't allowed to eat bread. Before, chicken was part of the taboo foods for the Navajo tribe, but now it is not the case. In fact, chicken for the Navajo tribe is an integral part of their diet. Bird control practices are usually an individual choice. Some do not discuss bird control with providers until a significant trust is established. Each tribe has specific foods believed to be beneficial for their pregnancy. Women in many tribes remain active throughout their pregnancy. Some believe that wearing a necklace may cause the babies to be born with umbilical cord wrapped around its neck. In some tribes, they wear necklaces made of juniper seeds and beads during labor to assist with a safe birth or delivery. Some believe that if a pregnant woman walks through a door backwards, she will have a breech delivery. Some believe that blowing up balloons may cause premature rupture of the membrane. Some believe that living projects unfinished may prolong labor. Stoicism during labor and delivery is valued by some. Younger or even generations may not adhere to any traditional birthing practices. For some tribes, the father is not usually present during the birth. Do not make the father feel guilty if he does not want to participate until after the delivery. Delivering in a kneeling position or squatting position is preferred by some. Postpartum, the mother may be isolated according to the sex of her child, one month for a boy and two months for a girl. However, this is not a widespread belief. Many women resume their normal activities within a week and are expected to care for their babies as well as the other family members. Women often turn to their mothers for advice after birth. Some tribes do not name the baby for a week or longer after the delivery and may include an English name along with the tribal name. In some tribes, the placenta is buried as a symbol of the child being tied to the land. Sometimes it is burned in a fire. This is considered a safe place because fire is sacred and protects the baby against the evil spirit. Death Rituals of American Indians In general, American Indians or Alaska Natives' religions do not have precise about life after death. Some believe in reincarnation with rebirth as a human, as a ghost, as an animal, or as a combination of this. Burial ceremonies vary by tribe. For example, the burial ceremony of the Zuni requires individuals to take three days off from work. Autopsy is generally acceptable. However, explain legal requirements if necessary. Also, American Indians expect and respect a wide variation on burial. 
Some tribes have preserved their spiritual beliefs in writing or as an oral tradition. Some adhere to the native North American church. Others may be more traditional, practice mostly Christian religions, or combine the two. The native North American church practices have four requirements for good health. The food, sleep, cleanliness, and good thoughts. The four divisions of nature are also a holistic part of the spirituality, the spirit, the mind, the body, and life. Roots of spiritual connectedness include singing, drumming, dancing, and using sweat lodges. For thousands of years, traditional indigenous medicine have been used to promote health and well-being for millions of native people who once inhabited the continent. Native diets, ceremonies that greet the seasons and the harvest, and the use of native plants for healing purposes have been used to live to promote health by living in harmony with the earth. Today, Native Americans frequently combine traditional healing practices with allopathic medicine to promote health and well-being. Ceremony, native herbal remedies, and allopathic medications are used side by side. Spiritual treatments are thus an integral part of health promotion and healing in Native American culture. Native Americans view pain as something to be endured and thus they do not ask for analgesics and may not understand that pain medication is available. Other times, herbal medicine are preferred and used without the knowledge of the healthcare provider. Native healers are divided into three categories. Those working with the power of good, the power of evil, or both. Generally, they are divinely chosen and promote activities that encourage self-discipline, discipline, and self-control, and that involve acute body awareness. Tribal practitioners divide their knowledge into preventive measures, treatment regimens, and health maintenance. Native Americans believe wellness is a state of harmony with one's surroundings. When people are ill or out of harmony, the medicine man, or in some case, a diagnostician, tells them what they have done to disrupt their harmony. Thus, they are returned to harmony through the use of a healing ceremony. Cultural perceptions of the sick role are based on the idea of maintaining the harmony with nature and with others. Ill people have obviously done something to place themselves out of harmony or have had a cursed place on them. Thus, American Indian healers usually perform ceremonies and rituals that promote spiritual treatments in combination with native herbal remedies and allopathic medications for health promotion and healing. <music> 